the management of distal radius fractures. This video will go over the normal anatomy of the radius as seen on x-ray before moving on to the pathology of a distal radius fracture. We will then look at the reduction technique and how to immobilize the fracture using plaster of Paris. There are two radiological views of the distal forearm, AP and lateral, and there are various parameters that can be measured on each. Number one is radial length and is measured between a stylo tip and the articular surface and should be between 10 and 13 millimeters. Number two is radial inclination and is the angle between the stylo tip and the medial part of the radius and should be about 22 degrees. Thirdly is volar tilt and is seen on lateral x-ray and is the angle between a line along the articular surface and a line perpendicular to the long axis. This should be about 11 degrees. Now that we've covered what normal distal forearm radiographs should look like, we can interpret the pathology seen here. Number one, the radius is shortened. Number two, there is decreased inclination. Number three, there is dorsal tilt at the distal radius on lateral x-ray as opposed to the normal volar tilt. And number four, there is also often dorsal comminution. Before attempting to reduce the fracture, it is important that the patient has received adequate analgesia and sedation. In the case of a distal radius fracture, regional anesthesia may also be appropriate. Reduction is done by applying traction in line with the lung axis of the bone for about a minute, then worsening the deformity with dorsal angulation to disimpact the bone fragments, then flexion of the wrist, followed by ulnar deviation and pronation. Extremes of ulnar deviation and flexion should be avoided. 20 degrees is perfectly adequate. You'll need plaster of Paris, soft padding, water, scissors, gloves, and an apron. When applying the padding, start at the distal end of the arm. Make a small hole to allow for the thumb and then go through the first web space twice before moving proximally. As you walk to work towards the elbow, you should aim for a 50% overlap between each layer of padding. It is important to note that the padding should be rolled onto the arm, not pulled on. When you reach the anti-cubital fossa, wrap the padding around a second time and then tear off the excess, as shown. You should put on gloves before working with the plaster of Paris. For the purposes of this video, we'll only be using normal bandages and so I did not put on gloves. Holding the plaster roll in one hand and the free end of the plaster in the other, submerge it in the water until all the bubbles disappear. Then remove it and squeeze gently to get rid of excess water. Start applying the bandage at the wrist and move distally, again rolling it onto the arm instead of pulling it to avoid additional pressure. There are two methods for getting a good fit around the first web space, either twisting the bandage or pinching it. This is repeated twice before moving towards the elbow, again with a 50% overlap. Do not apply the pop all the way to the end of the padding as this will make for a hard edge. Fold over the excess padding before applying the next layers. It is vital to note that for flexion of the MCP joints, the pop must end proximal to the second palm crease. If in doubt, check. Apply the second layer of pop in the same way. It is advisable to start molding the cast off after the second layer of pop. The layers of the pop must be smoothed and molded to give it strength and maximize the fit around the wrist. Molding is done using the palms of the hands, not the fingers, as this may cause indentation and could result in pressure sores. Ultimately, the cast should be oblong and not cylindrical, as this will give the greatest amount of support. After smoothing the pop, apply three-point pressure over the fracture to mold it to stabilize the reduction, as shown in the pictures. It is important to hold this position for three to five minutes until the pop has set. However, the pop will only be fully set in 24 hours. Apply the third layer of pop and mold it in the same way as before. The wrist should be slightly flexed and ulnar deviated. Please note that the patient's wrist in this video is too flexed and with too much ulnar deviation. After application, an x-ray needs to be done to ensure that there is adequate reduction. It is also important to do a neurovascular examination of the limb after cast application. The patient must be instructed to keep the cast dry and the limb elevated and to return if they experience any pain, swelling, discoloration of the fingers or any discharge or offensive smell. 